Question 9 introduces um, this term dibasic acid. So you can think of that as just meaning how many acidic hydrogens there are per molecule of acid. So sulfuric acid is, as it says, a dibasic acid because there are two ionizable hydrogens per uh, molecule. Phosphoric acid is um, a tribasic acid. There are three ionizable hydrogens per molecule. You do have to be careful though, uh, because it doesn't always work like that. Not every hydrogen is automatically um, acidic. So for example, this acid, um, H3PO3, um, is not a tribasic acid, even though it has three hydrogens, because one of them is not ionizable. So, and of course an obvious example where the same is true is that ethanoic acid has four hydrogens, but only it's a monobasic acid because only that one is acidic. So it's not necessarily equal to the number of hydrogens in the molecule, of course, but it's the number of ionizable ones, the one number that can be released as H plus ions. Okay, so um, in this question, we're focusing on sulfuric acid, which is the first of these. It tells you it's dibasic, uh, and we just say that, well, we described it in terms of molecules, or we can do it in terms of moles, so that each mole of sulfuric acid uh, can generate two moles of H plus ions. Right, so in brunswick lowry terms, the thing you have to remember is that conjugate pairs always differ just by one proton. So, um, if we start with H2SO4, that's going to be the acid, and its conjugate base is going to be not sulfate, but hydrogen sulfate, HSO4 minus. Okay, because just one proton different. So the equation whereby that happens in water is that that's going to happen, that's going to react with water, Okay, so aqueous sulfuric acid plus liquid water, and then you get the usual reversible sign, gives you HSO4 minus aqueous plus H3O plus. Okay, that's the brunstedt lowry version of the equation, where you don't simplify it to H plus, but you actually show that the water's picked up the proton. So HSO4 minus can then go on and lose the second proton, so we get HSO4 minus reacting with another water to give you sulfate plus a second proton. Um, and so then the next two parts, C and D, are just getting at the fact that in this equation HSO4- minus is playing the role of conjugate base with respect to H2SO4 which is the conjugate acid so these are a conjugate pair but this same ion HSO4- minus in this equilibrium is playing the role of conjugate acid with respect to sulfate, which is the conjugate base. So again, you've got a conjugate pair there. So again, that makes the point that we've already seen in the case of water, and indeed, even in the case of nitric acid, that something isn't automatically um, either an acid or a base. Substances can be both. They can be, uh, as in the case of hydrogen sulfate, they can be an acid, and donate a proton, but they can also be a base and gain a proton. And uh, that, that's quite a common situation. You just have to make sure you don't get confused by that. Question 10 then takes this idea a little bit further. So here you've got two substances which we normally think of as acids, nitric acid and ethanoic acid. But again, what it's saying is that just because we normally think of them as acids doesn't mean that's the only thing they can do. So what can happen here is that when you make a mixture of them,
like this. You can sometimes in these mixtures get acid-base reactions. Um, and generally the rule that you can apply is that whichever one is the stronger acid will function as the acid. That's something that seems logical um, and, and, and generally that will work. So you look at these two and you say, right, nitric acid is clearly a stronger acid than ethanoic. So if these are under going to undergo an acid-base reaction, this one is going to be the acid and this one is going to be the base. And then we just follow that thought through and say, right, well, if this one is um, the acid, it's going to donate a proton and leave NO3- minus behind. And that proton is going to be picked up by that, by the ethanoic acid. So you're going to get CH3COOH2+. Plus. Um, and that's the reaction that can happen. Um, so it looks weird because we're used to this losing a proton, not gaining one, but that's what happens in these strange um, non-aqueous mixtures. Again, brenstedt lowry tells you that we've got to have an acid and a base in this side, and clearly nitrate is the conjugate base of nitric acid. So that's one conjugate pair, acid and base, just differing by one H+. And this is the conjugate acid of ethanoic acid. So in this case, ethanoic acid is the base, and this rather weird looking thing is its conjugate acid with the extra proton. So in the back reaction, this acts as an acid and donates a proton to nitrate to generate nitric acid. In 10b, we're looking at a similar thing, but this time with ethanoic acid and phenol. Now what you hopefully remember from your organic chemistry is that this is a stronger acid than this. They're both weak acids, both of them are only slightly ionised in solution, but this is a much stronger acid than phenol is. And you know that, remember, from the reactivity with carbonate. This will fizz with carbonate, that won't, because it's a much weaker acid. So, based on the idea that we developed in part A, you know that because this is the stronger acid, which means that it will function as the acid when these two are mixed up together. So this will be the base. And so we can follow that idea through and say, right, if this functions as the acid, this time it's going to donate a proton. So we get the familiar ethanoate, which is the conjugate base of ethanoic acid. So there's our ethanoic acid, ethanoic conjugate pair. And the proton that's donated by the ethanoic acid will get picked up by the phenol. So we'll get this rather unfamiliar looking thing, C6H5OH2+, plus, and that is the conjugate acid of phenol. So it's not what phenol normally does, but under these weird conditions where you just make a non-aqueous mixture of the two acids, this one is able, sorry, this one is able to act as a base and generate this, which in the back reaction can act as an acid.